especially Facebook and YouTube. How you doing? This is Apostle Robert Jenkins. Wednesday morning, uh, 5.30 a.m. every day, Central Standard Time, 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. God bless everybody. And as always, me and my wife like to take out the time to say thank you. We appreciate all those who support us on a regular basis. God bless you. And we thank you for all that you do for this ministry. And as always, we ask you to do a couple things, and that is to share this on your page. Please share this on your page. So God bless you. God bless everybody. And as always, we love you. We appreciate you. It is a Wednesday morning, and we thank God for what you're doing. God bless you, Sister Williams. God bless you, Brother Reno. God bless you. God bless you. God bless everybody. Remember to hit that share button and also invite people out uh, for a morning word. We're moving towards Easter Sunday. Um, so I'm praying and seeing what the Lord uh, wants me to do concerning that, but we're just excited about what God is doing. Sister Tate, Sister Jan, God bless you. God bless you. We are a people of what? Prayer, praise, and power. We are a people of prayer, praise, and power. We are a people of faith, favor, and finances. Good to see everybody. Brother Dad, God bless you. God bless you. Sister Sedana, God bless you. So let's get ready. I see people are in anticipation for the word. Good to see you. The Bennett family, I got to call you. Been busy, but I got to call you. God bless you. God bless everybody. So let's get ready for prayer. We're always praying for children. We're always praying for family. Uh, we're praying for a greater hunger and thirst for God. This is a time to be sold out for God. There is a great deception going out in the world. There's a great compromise going on in the world. So make sure that you are tied into God. Have a love for God. Do not be moved by your emotions. This is a very emotional time. And the enemy is using uh, the emotions of people to cause them to come out of God, to miss the mark. Okay? And so make sure that your alignment and your covenant is where it needs to be in Him. We are excited. We are people of positivity as well. And so we move it. Thank God for you, Roberto. God bless you, man. You stay on my heart. I just feel a divine connection. So I got to make that phone call to you as well. So God bless you. God bless you. Let's get moving. I got a lot to say. We're going to finish up this series this week. So thank God for that. We're going to finish up this series dealing with Your Name Shall Speak. I hope you've been blessed by it. Uh, I believe that this series should be a book. Uh, I just, I got so many books. You just got to pray for me to get the right uh, support to be able to release all the books that God give me. But God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Come on, let's go into prayer. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your name. For your name is great in the earth. Your name is great in us. We thank you, Lord, by no other name can a man be saved, but by the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you said that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your perfect plan for imperfect people. And we thank you, Lord, for your atmosphere to be able to grow we thank you, Lord, for word of wisdom and a word of knowledge. We thank you, Lord, that the word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. We thank you, Lord, that you never leave us to ourselves and that you love us with the Holy Ghost who leads us and guides us into all truth. We thank you this morning, God, for what you're going to do. I'm excited. I hear the voices of heaven speaking to me. Allow me to know that you're going to break some bondages today. So thank you, Lord, for wisdom that speaks with us the spirit of insight, the spirit of wisdom, knowledge. You said the spirit of might, the seven candlesticks that speaks to us as a cloud of witnesses. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless your name for divine healing. We thank you, Lord, for pursuit, for the spirit to pursue after the things of God. Oh, God bless you for strength. Thank you, Lord, for power. Thank you, Lord, for joy. Thank you, Lord, for increase of wisdom, knowledge, Love, kindness. Thank you, Lord, for increase of commitment, loyalty. Oh, God, thank you, Lord, that you are faithful to your word. You are faithful to your promise. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for friendship. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for, for family that, that stays together. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all the things that we may endure, but you always give us an answer. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So have your way this morning, Holy Spirit. Teach us. Open up our minds. Open up our spirit to receive a word from you. Prepare us for your preparing. Prepare us for your preparing. God, get us ready to get ready. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord Jesus, for covering. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for love. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the cross. 
Lord, as we move towards Easter, we are reminded of what you did on Calvary, how you died for our sins, and we bless your name for it. Thank you, Lord, that we know that we are free, for you died, you became sin, the heat of noodle sin became sin, so that we can be free from sin. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for that power to become the sons of God. You didn't only really die, but you rose. You rose with all power in your hand, and then you gave us that power to become the sons of God. So we thank you, Lord. As we move into your day, give us the discernment that we need for this day to speak what you want us to speak, to touch the lives you want us to touch, to give in the places we're supposed to give. God, guide our minds to make the right decisions. You said that we would trust in you with all our heart and lead not into our own understanding and all the ways acknowledge you and you will direct our path. God, we bless your name. Now have your way, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord, for being God. Thank you, Lord, for being Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisa, El Shaddai, Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, we bless you for being the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Thank you, Lord, that you are the God of our past, our present, and our future. Oh, God, we bless you for all things. Thank you, Lord, for hope, faith, thank you, and love. Thank you, Lord, for, the, these, for these three, but the greatest of these three is love. Now, God, teach us how to love, to love our neighbor as we love ourselves, to love you with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our might. Oh, God, open us up to a greater move and an understanding of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Allow these rivers to flow out of our bellies. Oh, God, thank you, Lord, that you have planted us as a tree, planted by the rivers of living water. And whatever we do, it will prosper. Thank you, Lord, for prosperity in our lives as a sign of your favor upon us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for keeping power. Oh, God, we pray right now for our children. We pray right now for marriages. We pray for leadership, God. We pray for churches. We pray for a change, a turnaround, a spirit of repentance in the name of Jesus, God. Oh, God, thank you right now. And you said godly sorrow brings repentance. So, God, bring us to a place that we realize that we are the wretch, but you are the Savior. Hallelujah. And we thank you for Jesus. I have your way with our lives. We rededicate our lives over to you. These are your eyes. You use them, your hands, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that wherever we go, that we know you are a cloud by day and a fire by night, that we are never without a guide, that we are never without protection, that we are never without strength. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord, that you fortify us in the confidence that we have, that we, that we can say, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. We thank you, Lord for everything you have did and how you have moved us from faith to faith and from glory to glory. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, we declare all things done by his very nature. I give him glory. Make your requests known to God today. Begin to thank God for what he's doing. Begin to acknowledge God. You always wake up with a, with a spirit of gratitude. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for a house. Thank God for the small things this morning just to have shoes to put on. If you got one piece of bread, I thank you for that one piece of bread. Begin to thank God. Hallelujah. Thank God. Begin to speak and declare that what you know in your life, this shall be. God, I thank you in advance for the job that's coming. I thank you in advance for divine marriage. Begin to thank God. Begin to declare, I thank you, Lord, for divine healing, even in my body. Every morning, I thank God for divine healing. Even though my sinuses be acting up, I still thank God because I know what God has declared. And it shall come to pass. It has to manifest on earth because God already declared it. I'm already healed in the heavens, in the spirit. Declare it. Open up your mouth. We talked about yesterday that the first position is where you think, but the first works is, is what you speak. Declare it out of your mouth. Speak the works of God. Let me hear the works of God come out of your mouth. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name. Bless your name. Come on. Cut more minutes for you to do that. It's not just about hearing me pray, but we pray together. When you, He says, when you pray, say, Our Father. We are going together. Your burdens is my burden. Your concerns is my concerns. Make your requests known unto the Lord. I pray for oneness. That we be one. That we hear one another speak before we speak. That we feel the pains of one another. We become the answer to one another. You carry my medicine and I carry yours. When we come together, we both become healed. Thank you, Lord, for impartation of your anointing. 
for for gathering, for a gathering, for assembly, God. Every joint supply. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Make your requests known to the Lord. I'm praying for teachers. For teachers. For teachers. For teachers. You are a teacher in the earth. Hallelujah. You are a teacher in the earth. You have been equipped by God. You have been trained by your walk with God. You and God have built history by the things you have experienced while having a conversation with God. Hallelujah. And no man can take your gift. No man can steal your anointing. Hallelujah. Declare it done in Jesus' name. Come on. Come on. Have confidence in what God has said about you. Come on. Have confidence. Know that I am who God says I am. I am healed. I am wonderful. I am beautiful. Hallelujah. I am rich. Declare it. Declare it out of your mouth. I am who God says I am. This gift was given to me. Woo. God. Hallelujah. 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 God called you. God qualified you. Hallelujah. No weapon that against shall prosper. No weapon of form that against shall prosper. Hallelujah. Nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Oh, hallelujah. I am. I'm pleased. I'm whole. Declare it. Declare it. Declare it. When you say I am healed and I am whole, you're declaring that no, no visitation of guilt or shame can live in this mind. I speak where I live. Hallelujah. In him we live and move and have our being. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Hallelujah. See it done. It's already done. Finance is already done. What I need is already done. The blessings of God make them rich and add no sorrow to them. Hallelujah. God will send me the people that I need to be a blessing to me. He will send me to the people that need the blessing that I carry. I am a walking blessing, a talking blessing, a thinking blessing. Hallelujah. Rich, rich, rich. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hear the Lord washing you from the guilt and the shame. Do not let the devil hold you down for what you didn't do right yesterday. You woke up with new mercies. Your mercies are renewed every morning. So this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. So we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. All things are done. We walk in that destiny. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Welcome to Divine Insight Ministries. Uh, this is your first time we're out of New Orleans. Please hit that share button. Help us share this word across the nation. We love you. God bless you. And as always, walk in God's favor. Okay, we've been talking about Your Name Shall Speak. This is uh, uh, session eight, part eight. Okay, so we did seven sessions on your name shall speak. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Go back and watch them all. They're on my page. Uh, I believe that five of them are already on YouTube. You can go to YouTube. Remember, we have videos on YouTube, almost 500 videos on YouTube now. Go to YouTube and watch the first five, and then the, uh, the other five will be on YouTube uh, by this weekend. Okay, so do that. Remember, we have a page called Divine Insight. Please uh, sign up and all the things you got to do so you'll get the notification whatever we on. So we have a Divine Insight page that's on Facebook as well. And then we have YouTube videos. Thank you for how you support us in all the ways that you do. We love you. God bless you. Let's move on to part eight today, okay? Uh, for those who ask how to be a financial blessing, <clears throat> two things. I'll move quick. I try to stay away from the finances, let God lead you to do that. But we do have a PayPal and we do have a cash app. If you need more information concerning that, just inbox me or my wife and we'll give you those details. Okay, let's move into part eight. Let's go to Genesis chapter three. Okay, Genesis chapter three. And let's pick up at verse six. Genesis chapter three, verse six. Now, I've been speaking about the man, the woman. Ultimately, this started with dealing with Cain. I'm going to get to Cain probably tomorrow and Friday and finish up on Cain. Okay? And so, but I want to deal with the man and the woman because you must know how powerful you are as a man of God. 
You were made for God. You must know how powerful you are as a woman of God, that you're made for the man to finish God's work. So most of the things that I'm talking about here is things that need to be completed. Things are already completed in the spiritual realm. In the natural realm, you must manifest what was already done in the spiritual realm. So your whole purpose of being here was to finish in manifestation what God has already declared in the spirit. The reason why you're here is because God already created you in a spiritual place. You were always created. You were always with God. And so because of that, you had to be manifest on earth. But so was marriage. So everything is a part of the manifestation, even the fall. The fall was a part of the manifestation. Remember this. If the fall in the Bible was part of the manifestation so that man can do everything he's been assigned to do, he had to be on earth to finish his assignment. So God gave him an earth suit. And so the fall did not, watch this, did not change God's plan. Matter of fact, the fall is a part of God's plan. It's no different. And that's everything. Everything that was made was made by, by God. Was not anything made that was not made. And so I want you to hear that. I want you to hear the love in that. I want you to hear uh, the hope in that. Why? Because even in your fall, it still don't change God's plan. I want you to hear that. Just like this fall didn't change God's plan, your fall didn't change God's plan. And this is why we can go to Romans 8.28. And if you have to learn any Bible verses, and there's a lot of Bible verses you should know out of your spirit. When I pray, I usually pray at least 20 to 30 Bible verses as I pray. You'll notice certain things that I say consistently when I pray because we have to meditate day and night upon the word. If you really want prayer, you want you really want to see the 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 the, uh, the effect of prayer. Pray the word. Pray the word. See, that's again that's something that the old people taught us that we 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 didn't pass down anymore. I talked about and let me say that too. Thank you for everybody who came to uh, in my father's house ministries. I talked about the watchman. If you didn't hear that teaching, go to my page, go to Prophet James Summers page and watch the teaching on the watchman yesterday. Powerful. But I talked about things that should have been passed down by the watchmen. OK, but it's very important that you know the Bible, you know the word It's in your spirit. And so you can understand how it works, because God will always answer himself. God, I hear the Holy Ghost. God will always answer himself see god talks to god god walks with god and so when you give god back his word he's always faithful to his word his word cannot come back void okay very key and so you'll notice things like this i'll say he's a lamp to my feet like to my path pathway that's songs i'll say all things went together i'll say no before that gets me shall prosper i'll say let this mind be you is also in christ jesus i'll say be not conformed this world be transformed by the renewal of your mind those are all bible verses See, Bible verses. And so you must know that word of God. The more you know that word of God, the more God responds to himself. Okay? Very key. Very key. So that was for somebody. God bless you. And so we move it into that. And so when you know the word of God, do you know that the fall doesn't change anything? So back to Romans 8.28. That's where I was. And so it says, we know that all things work together for good. For good, for them, watch this, who are the call according to his purpose. For them that love, Lord, love God and who are the call. And so we know that all things, including the fall, including your mess up, including the worst thing that ever happened in your life, God uses it all. And so just like God uses your fall and you have a testimony, matter of fact, God, I feel the anointing. The power of God works in your life when you begin to testify from your testimony. We are overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony, what you've been through. And so do not trip when you mess up, because I feel that this morning in prayer. I felt like somebody may not have a good, didn't have a good last night. And, and maybe you went in the wrong places last night. Maybe you got angry and you said the wrong things last night. I feel a prophetic move. I don't care what happened last night. Don't wake up with guilt and shame from yesterday's uh, uh, situation. Because yesterday is gone. And you got renewed mercies. Mercy is even behind the veil. Hallelujah. And so you don't live in no guilt. You don't live in no shame. 
you wipe it off. You thank God for forgiveness. I confess my faults. God, you are faithful and just to forgive me and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And then you get back on your feet and you say, Lord, I bless you. Hallelujah. That you got the power to redeem and to restore. See? And so even that, and guess what? It's going to teach you how loving your father is. One of the greatest revelations I've ever received is when I was living in the wrong, uh, uh, this living in Rome. Matter of fact, this was, I don't know how many years ago, uh, maybe 20 years ago, maybe, maybe even longer. Uh, I was living in Buffalo, so it was, it was a long time. But I remember, I want to speak to somebody today. Okay, because sometimes you hear this message and you sometimes we see people that always look like they had it together. I didn't always have it together. I didn't always do the right thing. I didn't always say the right thing. I didn't always trust in God's word. I was just as fickle as many of us has been. I was suicidal. I was a whole lot of things. I remember one day when I was shacking up, I've, I've shacked up. I've lived with people shouldn't have been living with. I did all kinds of sins. Thank God for change. Hallelujah. Thank God for a shift. But one thing I realized in my messed up life, in my journey, that God's love would not forsake me. And I remember one of my greatest revelations is that God, you won't change your mind. Why do you keep speaking to me? Why do you keep giving me a word? Why do you keep showing me your love? Because he wanted me to know, know that your problems cannot outrun my promise. Your problems will never outlast my promises. Oh, God. And I got a revelation that he won't change his mind. Most of the time, and I'm speaking to somebody today, that when you tell people the real you, they change how they see you. Most people only see you by the lies you've been telling. If they knew the truth about what you're really dealing with, how you really feel, hallelujah, what you're really going through, how, how, how you think sometimes, the things you say, oh, how messed up you are, they will change their perception. But God is the person that know you before you knew you. Uh-oh. And he knows everything that you're thinking, everything that you've ever been through. And God says, you can't change my mind. Uh-oh. All things work together for the good. So God says, it don't matter. There is no emergency in heaven. There's never been a wake-up call in heaven where the angel said, God, wake up, wake up, wake up. You ain't going to believe what Jacob's did today. Oh, you ain't going to believe this. There'll never be a surprise by your behavior. He knew when he made you out of the dust what dust can do. Oh, he knew when he gave you a soul what a will could choose. He knew when he gave you emotions how deep your emotions could feel. He knew when he gave you intellect how much you could think for yourself. But he said all of these things was given to man. To complete the plan, I want him to know how to be angry but not sin. I want to, I want him to see all the elements of the flesh and still be led by the Spirit. So as I talk today, and you see the errors of Adam and Eve, you'll see yourself. Adam and Eve shows us the power of the flesh, but they also show us the power of the Spirit. And so just like their fall, was a part of the plan to bring us into complete manifestation so that we can have dominion over the fish of the seas, the fowls of the air, and everything that creeps upon the earth, that we can be fruitful, multiply, and replenish on earth. Remember, our assignment is to be divine from an earthly place. So just like you make many mistakes and you're still called, can I talk to you? God, I feel the Holy Ghost. I want to talk to you today. Yes, you messed up, but you're still called. Yes, you made some bad decisions, but you're still called. Yes, yes, some of you, you, you the guilt trying to ride on you because you went to an abortion clinic. You was 100% wrong. You don't have a right to take a life, but God forgive even those that commit uh, abortion. God forgives you. Because you've been trying to preach this thing under the guilt of what you did. But God forgive you. Many of you did some wrong crime. If Many of you are listening in prison. You're going to be in prison listening to this word. But I'm telling you, God forgave you. So I want to talk from every aspect. Because sometimes we don't think God can use us. You think the plan is not doesn't include you. Because you are Cain and you killed Abel. 
You murdered some people with your tongue. You messed up some people. Hallelujah. You made some bad decisions. You went against God and did it your way. But God still says the perfect plan, the perfect plan I have, I knew what was going to happen. And I put things in place for your fall, when you fall, knowing you was going to fall, so that you could get up. Woo! I knew. Listen, I used to work at Wendy's. I used to work at Wendy's. <laughs> I was the manager. They sent me to school, got my degree uh, for working in a restaurant. And when I worked at Wendy's, they had this thing, and you know about this thing, but I want to bring it to you, bring it to your awareness so we can shout together. Watch this. They had this thing called food loss. And when they would buy the food, they would buy it more than enough to include the loss. Ooh. So when somebody would drop a hamburger, it wouldn't mess up the sales because the loss was included. The loss was included in the purchase. Ooh, when they purchased the meat, they purchased the meat, including the loss. When God went to Calvary, he included the loss when he purchased us with his blood. Oh, I know who going to fall. This is why on, on, on the cross, he said, forgive them for they know not what they do. It don't matter. I'm dying for everybody, for the world. So the perfect plan includes every imperfect decision. So we don't we don't we don't trip when we see falls and mistakes. We get up because nothing stops the will of God. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Chapter three, verse six. Hit that share button today. We're encouraging you because all of it is a part of the plan. Can I tell you something? God is always giving us their hits and colds in everything that we see. If you can read the cold, you are never without a sign. The problem is, can you see? Can you see the sign? You hear me? Can you see the sign? Even in this, he died on Friday. Well, you can't rise with all power if you don't die. So in order for Christ to have all power, he has to die. He has, to, he has to be murdered. Yeah, they have to pierce him in the side. Uh, in order for him to rise with all power, it looked like the father has to say, uh, why have you forsaken me? That wasn't God forsaken Jesus. That was God forsaken sin. He had become sin. You know that there's some things that you must go through in order for you to rise at another level. Oh, you better believe it. And so, so, so dying was a part of the plan so that resurrection can be the conclusion. Woo! Oh, there's some things that when you died, they died with you. Hear this. When Jesus died, he didn't just die. He took every sin with him. There's some things that when you died, they died with you. Lust died with you. Every time you die, you kill the thing that is with you. So if you're struggling with something, just die. And when you die, it's dying with you. Woo! Oh, my God. That's why we die every day. Because every day that a struggle comes, whatever comes, I'm going to kill it because I'm going to die. Again, go back to the movie Matrix, one of my favorite. I see some choices on. Uh, in, in, in one of the Matrix, I think it's... Uh, uh, Three, in Matrix 3, Neo realized the only way to really kill the enemy is to let him get within all the enemy, all of, of the agents get inside of him. And while they're inside of him, he's up with the sun and he dies. And when he dies, the whole enemy dies. God is trying to kill some things that's been in your lineage. And when you die to that drama, when you die to that negativity, you have destroyed all the enemies that was in your whole lineage. And that was necessary for you to get mad, frustrated, upset. I'm tired of living this way because there's some things you won't take to the grave until you're tired of them. There's some falls you won't take to the grave until you're tired of falling. And so it's all a part of God's plan to bring you to a place that you give up on things that's been controlling you so that God can raise you with power. Ooh, okay, here we go. Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. Here we go. Watch this. 
And when the woman saw, when the woman saw, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, good for food, watch this. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, watch this, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, watch this. And the tree to be to be desired to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. Woo! Watch this. And gave also to her husband with her, and he did eat. Okay. All right. Back to the notes today. <laughs> First point. In your name speaking, I talked about, and I don't want to go over it, the power of a womb, the power of a woman. There are some things that you have, there's part of God's plan. If it's God, and I want to give you hope today because I feel that the Lord is saying we're going to encourage you today. Um, do not give up your rights and your birthright to be married when God has designed you to be a wife. All the elements of being a wife is in you. I don't care, and I'm a, let me let me preach from both from both spectrums today. Let me speak from the earth and from the heaven. So I'm gonna say some words that may seem carnal, but I want I want the I want the earth to hear it. And so you may have been connected to a knucklehead. You may have been connected to a man who has no eyes to see you. You may have been connected to a woman who has no idea how to birth what's in you. She knows she has no understanding of her womb and why she's given a physical womb for a spiritual purpose. But that does not disqualify you of being a man. And it doesn't disqualify you of being a woman. So I want to encourage you as a man, God is raising you up, been walking with you and knowing your purpose. Do not give up the right because your last two marriages didn't work. Because the relationship you in right now is not of God. Know that you are called to be connected to a woman that, that uses everything that God gave her to fulfill your ministry. I'm praying for you and I encourage you that just because you're not in the right place don't mean you're not going to get there. You got to keep traveling and keep believing. Okay? So I'm going to talk to you from that because there are things that God has given us that's a part of the plan. That the devil wants you to become frustrated. He wants you to be content and sorrow. He wants you to believe that it never will get better. And that's not the truth. You don't have all the things you have. Watch this. You don't have all the things that you, that you have for no reason. There's a reason why God gave you what he gave you. Okay? So I want you to understand that. Okay? So watch this. The woman had a gift. Because she was designed to help Eve, help me, help Adam manifest what God gave them in the spirit. Watch this. So what happened here is that she saw the tree that make one wise. Point number one that I wrote down. A woman's imagination, when it's tied to God, can bring anything into manifestation. A woman's imagination, when it's tied to God, can bring anything into manifestation. She was born with the equipment to not only birth it, but to imagine it. This is why a woman, from just from being a woman, she's a seer. A woman, just because she's a woman, is a seer. And the enemy understood, I told you before, you got to go back over the previous teachings. The enemy looks at what you were designed to do, and he tries to get you to do that for him. He tried to get you to do that for the kingdom of darkness, not the kingdom of lights. But your ability is neutral. Your ability is neutral. You can operate in both worlds because gifts are neutral. Okay? Watch this. If you have the gift or the talent to play drums, you can play for James Brown or James Cleveland, because the gift is neutral. If you have a gift to gab, you can talk for yourself, or you can talk for God, because your gift is neutral. It's a gift. It can go both ways. 
it is a manifestation of equipment. It's not a saved piano. It's a piano. It's not a sanctified C note. It's a C note. It's E flat. How you use it, where you are with the instrument, determines the spirit or the signal that is released. But the note is just a C chord. But if you as the vessel is in a certain place, it gives a certain sound because it comes through you. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Okay, watch this. So she is born with the ability to imagine her, her imagination. So when the Bible says when she looked at the tree, she saw it to make one wise. She saw what it could do. Her ability to imagine bring what could be into what is in her mind, her imagination. She was born to do that because when she is connected to the seed, to her husband, to what God has given him, she sees what he says. She imagined it. And then she said, I saw it too. And then she comes into agreement in manifestation with what God showed you as a man because of her imagination. There is nothing you have as a man that your wife cannot imagine. Oh, this is one of the reasons how you know you're with the right person. When you see this agreement walking because she has learned how to use her imagination, not for herself, but to be able to partake into something to bring manifestation. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Are you hearing me? Oh, talk to me. Talk to me. When you find a woman who is not using her imagination for the purpose that God put y'all together, that means she's been wounded somewhere. Now, the danger is that the gift is still working. She can imagine all kinds of things because of the gift that God gave her that in a woman she has imagination. So it says here, now, the enemy had been working on her because he knew she was a woo. Woo. He knew that if I get her, if I get her to believe it. Now, God, I don't want to go too fast. I feel the Holy Ghost. Watch this. Watch this. You have never seen your ideas come together until you meet somebody in your life, a woman in your life, that takes what's in you and she see it. It even uses the word saw. She saw the tree. She saw the tree. She saw the tree. Let me read it again. And when the woman saw the tree that was good for food, she could see where it's going. She could see the results of it. I'm telling you, and watch this. I'm going I'm, 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 I'm to uh, declare something. I believe that for many of you that are listening, your time has come to meet your Eve. For somebody to take what's in you and birth it out. Hallelujah. To show you what they saw. I saw it. I saw it happening. It, and I'm telling you, I'm blessed. I thank God my wife. A soul can come to me now. And I, I've learned what to do. I learned, I've learned that if I give it, if I give it to my wife and she moves it, and let me use some improper English. If I can get her to say she saw it, I know it's done. If I get her to say she saw it. So I do it with everything. Another day a song came to me. I said, baby, this is what I'm hearing. Tell me what you're hearing. Because if I know, if I give it to my wife. Now I want you to learn something. What the devil did to Eve is what every husband should do. The devil knew that I could get her to do the wrong things because of what she's been designed to do. She is the one that manifests. The wound is what manifests. If you want to see a flower grow, don't keep the seeds on the kitchen table. Put them in the woman. Put them in the mother. Put them in the earth. Put them in the womb that has what it needs. Everything that you need to grow is in the ground. If the ground is right, woo, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. It will grow it. Watch this. So I said, baby, I'm hearing the soul. Tell me what you hear. I wait on her. She thinking. All of a sudden, she saw it. She said, this is how the soul go. And next thing you know, my soul is complete. Because I gave it to the woman who know how to. She said, I saw it. The other day, I was doing something in the backyard. Watch this. I said, baby, I want to put some rocks right there. Do you see it? She looked. She looked. I said, let me put the rocks there. She said, okay, I saw it. See, I know it. Watch this. Now, watch this. 
I also know that if the devil ever try to make me think I can do it by myself, then he will trick me because the manifestation has to come from he said unto them. So I know how to protect my marriage by not trying to go outside of my wife because she's the one that should birth it. It'll never look the way it should look without the womb bringing it into full manifestation. Uh-oh. Are we learning? See? Oh. Okay, watch this. So the first point, a woman's imagination can bring anything into manifestation. Now, you as a woman, do you hear that? Tell the devil, get off your back. They're making you think you can't bring that in the past. As a woman, the devil will try to make you think that you cannot birth this. You're not a great woman. You're not a great mother. You're never getting nothing done. This is why, and I'm going to talk about it today. This is why the devil, uh, he hates women. Because it is because of this position and this operation that things are manifest. If you look at the church, the only reason why the church is still surviving, the church has been messy for years. And forgive me if that word offends you. But because the women are even keeping it alive. It's the woman that keeps it alive. It's the truth of the matter. You look at these families, it's grandma that keeps these families together. It's the woman. So the enemy is always upset because she is the one that manifests. This is part of the purpose. And so many times you are a great man, but the devil will make sure you don't meet your woman. Do you understand why your fight been so great? Because he never wants what's in you, man, to manifest. And I'll never let you find the right woman. I'm going to fight you against her. I'm going to try to get to her before you get to her. The enemy wants to get to the woman that's supposed to birth your baby so the enemy can birth his baby through your woman. We got to begin to pray for our women's. We got to begin to travail for them because the enemy is after our young women. He's after the female because he knows the manifestation of God's original plan comes through the woman. Nobody can support you better than the woman who's behind you. Nobody can lift your dreams and visions greater than the woman who's behind you and believe she'll, she'll move on what she saw. I saw what it should do, how it should look, how it should be. And she begins to work it. Okay, watch this. Point number two, a woman is the master of the law of influence. The woman is the master of the law of influence. If anybody can influence you, I've seen some lazy men in my life, but I've seen them same lazy men meet the right woman, and next thing you know, he working three jobs. Because there's something when you... When, when you Tied to a woman who knows how to birth what was always in you, but you couldn't get it out. You couldn't manifest it when you were the right woman because she's the master of influence. She can influence you. That's why uh, maybe sometime last week, somebody said, what do you do when a man is not in a place? You as a woman, the, your master of influence can influence her or influence him. No gay stuff. Influence him. To go into the right place. You're an influencer. <laughs> Alright? That's your job. And if the devil, and watch this, if the devil get a woman to be in the wrong place, he'll influence her to do things you have no you have no concept. Because remember, nobody imagination can go as deep as a woman imagination. Woo! That's why if the devil mess with her mind, she'll see stuff that never happened. You'll say that never happened. She'll say it did happen because of her imagination. But guess what? If you if she's in the right place, she'll saw, she'll see stuff you never saw. You say, I didn't even think it can even go that far because of her imagination. She's the master of influence. She works from her imagination. She saw the tree to make one wise. Now, even though the devil used it for the wrong reason, the potential and the purpose was there for a reason. Do not let your falls misinterpret what you possess. 
Just because you didn't do the right thing with it don't mean you're not called to use it. Don't throw it away because you've been using the wrong. Use, learn how to use it the right way. I've always had the gift of talk. I just have to learn how to speak for God, not for myself. I've always known understanding of music. I just have to know how, how to influence it now with God's reason for my music. I can take the music and play and you'll want to go to bed with somebody. I can take the same music and direct it to the right person, to God, and now you will get on your knees and cry before God because the gift was given to me, but I have to know what I've been given and not because I haven't did it, did it right don't mean I should abandon it. It means I should learn how to use it according to God's plan so my name can speak the right sound. Woo! Okay? Oh, watch this. The woman brings the part of the union. The one that's, that's why I'm praying for married couples. I really believe next year, 2020 and 2021, we're going to see a more restoration of marriages. I believe 2020 and 2021, more people are going to get married. And I believe in, in 2021, that's what I'm feeling in my spirit. 2020 and 2021, people are going to begin to marry for divine purposes. For many of you, you got married for lust. You got married for money. But I believe God is restoring the remnant, putting us in the right place. And this time when we get married, you'll know your purpose of why you're connected to that woman. It won't be about money. It won't be about sex. But So that's going to happen. I really believe in 2020 and 2021, a lot of older couples are going to get married. People who have not had husbands. You're 45 years old. You're 52. Somebody going to be at 60, 66, and they're getting married. Because now they understand their purpose in life. There's a reason why God is still preserving you and you're 45 and you've never been married. There's a reason why that you still feel all the qualities of, of, of a wife and you're 52 years old. Oh yes, I believe God will do it. I also believe that a lot of people uh, mothers going to have children in their old age, but these children will come out with a level of wisdom because they don't, they don't have as much time as the previous generation had. I believe that's going on and God is going to begin to do that because you have to know that the qualities of what you call the birthing is still in you. You still understand how to do it. You ain't lost your passion to build something. That's why the enemy fights you on relationships because he don't want you to use the right tools with the right man. He wants you to believe that nobody will ever appreciate you as a wife or as a woman. They won't see your beauty. So all of this imagination that you have, you don't know where to place it. And so the enemy has messed up a lot of people's lives. He think anyway by you using your imagination with the wrong man. That's the wrong man to be he don't really understand his purpose but when you get with the right man and the right woman and we know how to work together the woman brings the union and I'm telling you we have not seen ministry as we go see it we have not seen married couples we have not seen families but when this union come together and do it the right way it's going to change everything we've ever seen in life oh hallelujah don't give up Eve I need what you possess. I need you to be able to see the things you see. I need you to be able to birth because you bring the union. You bring the union. You bring the completion. So I'm praying for you. Don't give up, man, because you got so much in you, but you don't have nobody to birth it up. You know it's there. It's hard for a man to appreciate what he can't see. The woman lets him see it. The woman lets him see it. Eve was in Adam. But when, but when she came out, he said, she's bold of my bone. He was able to value her because he seen it. You help me see, woman. You help me see what I heard God say. I know God told me some things, but I can't see it because I need my helpmate to help me see it. She brings union. I'm going to show you in the text. Watch this. She gave it to her husband that was with her also. I don't want to deal with where he was weak and all that stuff. I want to deal with the positive points of what should have happened in the text. And let's learn from their fall like you learn from your own. Do not allow the fall say, to make you feel like you're disqualified. You're still the right person. You just got to get on the right team. Oh, God. So I want you to hear that, okay? Now watch what happened. The enemy, I want to show you what's in the text. I don't want you to show you the negative because a lot of times you focus on the negatives and you don't get the positive out of your fall. There's a positive class come out of your negative fall. There's a positive. My, the, God, here it goes again. The Lord gave my wife a word about maybe seven days ago that's so profound 
my, my wife was at work, and I don't want you to be alarmed what I'm about to tell you. She's fine. But she was at work, and she fell. And sometimes her knee go out, and she fell. She was okay. I was very concerned and put a tear in my eye when I see her fall to see my wife fall, and God gave me a revelation. He said, see how that bothers you when your wife fall? Well, it did, it did that a billion times more to me when I see Adam and Eve fall. I see my, I seen the love of my life fall. I seen the one that I want to live the dreams and the, the purpose of the rest of my life. I see her fall. And it did something to my heart that I had to hold back the tears. I know I need, she needed me to be there as strength for her. I couldn't be weak right now, but I was, I was, I was wrestling with my emotions of how I was feeling because my wife fell. At the same time, I got to be strong and lift her up. That's God. Watch this. When I got her up, she said, I'm okay. Sometimes it happened. She fell. Watch this. But then she said, God gave her a word when she fell. She said, I felt like that the fall fixed me. And when she said it, I couldn't believe it. Sometimes it's in the fall that creates the fix. She said, I was fixed by the fall. I've been having some problems with some stuff, but it looked like when I fell, let the fall fix some things. You didn't hear that in the, did you hear that? I'm trying to tell you that when we read Genesis, you got to see that the fall fix some things. Ooh, the fall fix some things. There's some things that need to happen in order for you to have manifestation. And you got to see that sometimes God fix you by the fall. Woo! It's the fall that woke me up. It's the fall that made me realize who I was. It's the fall that put some things in order. Sometimes we are fixed by the fall. Woo! God. So you better hear it. So let's let's look at what let's look at what just got fixed by the fall. <laughs> Ooh. Okay? I'm gonna show you. Because I'm gonna show you you. Here it is. She gave it to her husband that was with her, right? Now, we know that they disobeyed God. They should not have eaten. Watch this. Oh, that's right, Brother Mike. The fall can teach the lesson. Watch this. They should have But watch what happened. Let me show you how powerful God made them. Their operation, and I want you to get this. The lesson today is don't think because you fail that who you are has changed. Oh, matter of fact, you will now exercise the power of where you fail because you know what falling feels like. You now are going to apply medicine to an area that you would have never thought you needed medicine in that area. Thank you, Sister Valentine. God bless you. Watch this. Well, I'm going to show you how powerful they are. How we know they're powerful. They just sinned against God. They just did the wrong thing. But everything that's in them is still working even when they are out of order. Let me show you. The eyes of them both were open. Don't miss the revelation. We say their eyes was open. Now they, they open to a whole new world. Right. They're now their eyes are open to a world that they have to apply divine principles in. They never needed the God side of them in this area before. God, I feel the anointing. But now that you're open to another world, now you'll be able to till the ground because you can see it. Now you'll be able to bring it to manifestation because now you're in it. And the devil think he tricked you by getting you into his world. But it's his world that I wanted you to have dominion over. And you couldn't have dominion over until you got to it. Oh, God. Oh, I'm setting you up to show you how old things work together. You don't believe this. Oh, oh. This is, this is what we use as a perception evil. In Isaiah, it says God created good and evil. What it means is that God created a pathway for us to have the power of God over evil by allowing evil to have a pathway. And it shows my dominion. Oh, God. See, God creates things and allows things to happen so that you can know how much power you have. Yeah, Lazarus is sick. 
I can show up now. Matter of fact, the Bible reads that Lazarus was sick, but not unto death. Lazarus looked like he wasn't supposed to die, but Jesus waited for him to die. Why? So that I can show them I am the resurrection. You don't know I'm the resurrection until somebody die. You don't know I'm the doctor until somebody got cancer. You don't know it. And so God is not giving you cancer. He's revealing who the God of the cancer is. It shows you the completion of the God that you serve. And the very thing that is in God, he's a God of life and death. He's the God of heaven and earth. You are the son of both. So it doesn't matter. Matter of fact, you're right, Sister Joyce. The trick was on the devil to let to be in a world where my sons will have dominion. I kick you out, devil of heaven. You don't have any rights there. And now I'm kicking you out of earth. You think earth belongs to you. You are only the prince of the air. But you may be the prince, but that's my son. And I'm the king of kings and the lord of lords. Watch how I use myself. I'm going to come down, take what was lost in the first Adam. I'm going to come as the last Adam. They're going to take on my flesh, my flesh, and they're going to have dominion over the devil's demons because now the world is open. Woo! Now watch this. God, I'm going too fast. I'm going too fast. Watch this. And the eyes of them were both open. Why was the eyes of them both open? Because they both have a work to do as a unit. He said, unto them, be fruitful. Unto them, multiply, replenish. He said, unto them, have dominion. So the devil says, I got them. Look, look, they both eyes is open. You know what they said? We know what to do. Woo! The spiritual part of them understood this. Why? How do we know this? Because why are both of their eyes open? The purpose that God put in them is still working. You better believe that only reason why you got out the trouble you got out of is because God equipped you to get out of the trouble by what he gave you. He gave it to you before you got in trouble. You knew how to pray before you got out in trouble. So when you got in trouble, you just prayed your way out of it. God never left you unequipped. The eyes of them were both open. They can still do it in another place. I hope you hear it. You may be in another place, but you still can do what God called you to do. You still can do it. You got a record. You still can do it. You've had abortions. You still can do it. You've been married and divorced. You still can do it. You've messed up many times. You still can do it. Woo! You still can do it. You messed up. You may be in a bad situation right now, but hit, are your eyes open? Then use them in the place that you see. Use them in the place that you're at. Bless God where you are. Woo! <laughs> And the eyes of them both were open. Watch this. And they knew that they were naked. They knew. My wife knew. My husband knew. We still together. Devil, we may be out of the wheel, but we still together. We, we, we did something that it looked like we shouldn't have did, but our assignment does not change based upon our decision. Did you hear that? I don't care what decision you make, your assignment is still your assignment. Ooh, you got it right, Brother Barry. We are more than an overcomer. Why would he tell you you're overcomer if there was not anything to overcome? The overcomer was to tell you there is a world that is going to look like you're defeated, but when you get in that world, become the overcomer. You don't need to be an overcomer in heaven. You don't need to be an overcomer when you're doing everything right. You're an overcomer when you make bad decisions and you tell the bad decision, I am an overcomer. Comer. You, you, yeah, you did leave home, prodigal son. You did waste the money, prodigal son. You are in the pig pen, prodigal son, but you're still a son. You're still a son. In the pig pen, you're still a son. You made, you waste the money, son. You did the wrong thing, daughter. How you lied 
married, you manipulated, but you're still a son. <laughs> you better believe it. The assignment don't change because you're 40, because you're 50. The assignment don't change because you made some bad decisions. The assignment don't change because you're hard-headed and stiff-necked. The assignment don't change. I'm still promise you something. Your eyes are still open. It's open to a whole nother world to use what you already got. There's some things you got from heaven you're going to have to use on earth. There's some things you learned in the church you're going to have to use it when you get in the bar. There's some things you learn in home that you're going to have to use them when you get in the streets. You know mama didn't raise you that way, but mama sent you out equipped. I'm trying to tell you, mamas, don't be upset when your daughters and your sons seem to go astray. You sent them out into a place equipped, and when they get out there, their eyes will be open, and they will realize, mama raised me for this. I didn't know I wasn't supposed to do this, but what she told me is how I get back. Woo! What mama taught me was how I get back. Their eyes was open. They knew that they were naked. You know, what's, you know what's wrong with us? You trying to make your bad decisions close your eyes. Oh, God. You, you think because you didn't do what God told you to do that you're afraid to see your nakedness. See your nakedness. The problem was the shame and the guilt, not the nakedness. You always was naked, Adam. You've always been naked before God. Quit letting the devil make you feel bad about being naked. About being transparent. Everybody know what I'm going through. Everybody know it don't matter. That's how you live. Now you will know how to live from a divine place. Anybody can live from a divine place when you ain't making no bad decisions. I want to know can you praise him when you're wrong. I want to know can you bless him when you're not in the right place. I want to know can you deal with your mess when everybody know it. I, yeah, anybody can act like they praise God when, when all the bills are paid. I want to know when the bills are not paid. When your life is messed up, when you made some bad decisions, can you still say, I know I'm naked. I know I'm a wretch. I know on the human side, but on the spiritual side, I'm a son of God. See, you got to get to the place where you can say like Apostle Paul, oh, wretched man that I am. Oh, I can say that and not lose my identity. I can say I'm a wretched man on one side, and on the other side, I can say I'm the chief apostle because I don't have no problem with understanding how all things work together. On the natural side, watch here. Let me give you some. Let, I feel like preaching. Let me give you some. On Jesus' mother's side, he hungered. But on his daddy's side, watch this. He was the bread of life. On his mother's side, he cried. On his spiritual side, he knew all things would work out. On his, on his mother's side, he thirsted. On his father's side, he was the living water. Oh, on his mother's side, he was sorrowful till he sweat a blood. But what's this? But on the spiritual side, he knew everything is already done. You better know both sides of who you are. One side, my eyes is open to seeing, open to lust, open to all these things. But on the spiritual side, I'm free and I'm free indeed. I got to teach one side to me to control the other side of me and not be afraid of what I see from the other side. Not be afraid of what I know about my own nakedness. What do you know about your own nakedness? Are you acting like you ain't naked? Quit using religion as clothes. Quit using your job as clothes. Quit using your marriage as clothes. God made you naked and not ashamed. The problem is not the nakedness. The problem is the shame. Woo! See? But I want you to feel some things you never felt before so you can know how to use what you never used before. Did you hear that? There's some things you will go through that you've never been through before so that you can use some things you've never used before. You never used this power before. You never used it in this era before. You never used prayer for your own flesh. You've been praying for everybody else. Now pray for your own self. Because there's some things about you that come out of the desk that you need to use. See? God created you to use you on the desk, you. Woo! All right, here we go.
Oh my God, watch this. The eyes of them both were open. Your marriage can make it even when y'all are not doing the right thing. If both of your eyes stay open to what you see is wrong. They were really expressing the units that could free them. They not use them in the right place, but they're there. My eyes are open. My wife's eyes are open. When the enemy try to send somebody in, you see who he is? He tried to come and separate us, baby. She'll say, you see who she is? See that woman right there? She's trying to separate us. As long as our eyes are both open, nobody gets deceived. We already, watch this, have been equipped to handle deception if we both see. We Watch this. We both, I don't care what terrible thing is going on in any covenant relationship. If y'all both can admit that we're both naked, naked, I'm naked to this thing. And they both knew that they were naked. Watch this. The problem with marriage is not working is when you're not unified because you've been given unity to handle your, your physical problems. You've been given unity to handle your issues. The devil comes to divide. A house that's divided cannot stand. They could have stood because the unity was still there. Woo! They knew that they were naked. Watch this. And they sold fig leaves together. Now, should they have sold fig leaves? From the spiritual side, we say no. But really, fig leaves was to show them what you can do, what you can make if you work together. Don't miss, don't miss the lessons out of your fall. Don't miss the lessons out of your fall. Your fall says, look, we can see together. Look, we can be naked together. Baby, you don't have to have no secrets. I don't have to have no secrets. I'm going to stay naked in the marriage. Never act like I got to act like a certain way in front of you, baby. I don't have to act a certain way in front of you. See me for who I am. I see you for who you are. Oh, because I stay naked. Baby, I don't have to close my eyes and act like I don't see that. We can see together. Oh, do we need fig leaves? You know, whatever we do together, it'll get done. We can sow fig leaves if we stay together. Watch this. Don't deal with what they should have did. Deal with what they have to do it with. Because what you have to do it with is the same thing that worked for the devil is the same thing that works for God. God gave you the equipment. It was how you were using it. It was how you were using it. They sold fig leaves a covering. I understand. Don't go too deep on this because I, I don't want you to miss the unity. You're right. They sold fig leaves as a symbol of covering each other as God covered it. That's right. See? You can do it. But it's in together. Why? Because God said it to them. You, your name will speak when you understand what you have been given to work with the next person. This is friendship. This is marriage. When you understand it, it's together. They sold fig leaves together. You know why you ain't seen your name speak? Or And their name is Adam. Their name is Adam. And God called their name. You know why you ain't seen it? Because you keep working against your wife. You keep working against the woman that's going to birth what God gave you. Don't work against her. She going to show you what it looked like. Don't work against him. He the one that's going to give you the seed to birth it. Don't work against him. Don't work against her. Work together. If y'all out of the wheel, y'all can get in the wheel together. You can get in the wheel together. But make sure your eyes are open together. Make sure, watch this, that your nakedness, that both of y'all know one another's nakedness together. Quit letting everybody else know how naked you are when your wife don't know how naked you are. Don't tell your nakedness to another woman. Don't tell your nakedness to another man. The only person should know your nakedness is the one you've been connected that you were born naked with. Ooh. And they sold fig leaves together. Made themselves aproned. And watch this. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking. Adam 
God didn't just hear a voice. Eve didn't just hear the voice. They heard the voice. If you keep your eyes open together, even when you're in the wrong place, you could be shacking up with somebody right now. Open your eyes and see where y'all are. And if you say, I believe he's my husband, I believe she's my wife, we, we, didn't, we didn't do it right, we shacked up, but are your eyes open together? Do you so fig leaves together? We're going to come with another. We're going to go get married. We're going to get counseling. We're going we're gonna to seek the will of the Lord because we're going to do this together. And we both heard God say how to get out this thing. They both heard, heard the voice of the Lord. And they heard. You know why things don't work? Because you think you're the only one that can hear, man. You're the only one that hear God. Like she can't hear God. She hearing God too. And they heard the Lord God walking. They heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves. If I'm going to hide, I'm going to hide with her. If I'm going to hide, I'm going to hide with the person that God connected me to. And they hid themselves among the trees of the garden. Did you get it? The unity. Now, the whole purpose of everything that I said, that your name should never be great until there's oneness. The church will never be where it needs to be. You know why? Because we rather have blind people in the church. Why can't everybody's eyes be open to what's going on? I don't care if it's out of order. Don't hide, that. don't hide what's out of order to me, pastor. We'll never get it right, pastor, if our eyes are not open. You can't be the only one that see what's going on. Everybody's eyes got to be open. All of us have to be able to know one another's nakedness. How are you going to have a friendship and, and they got secrets? Come on. See? Oneness in their eyes. Oneness in their covering. Oneness in their hearing. Oneness in their hiding. In their hiding. I'm going to say it again. Oneness in their eyes, and their eyes were open. Oneness in their work. Oneness, they sold fig leaves. Oneness in their work. Oneness in their work. These are key expressions. We never understood. And this oneness was working where? From their human perspective. The whole purpose of, of having spiritual divinity, having spiritual revelation, why have so much revelation when you don't know how to work with nobody? Why are you so spiritual but you don't, you're not one with nobody? Why do you think you're so spiritual but your eyes are closed to so really what's going on? Why you only can handle spiritual things but you can't handle the mess? Where is the unity when you are in trouble? Oneness in eyes, oneness in work, Oneness in, in covering, oneness in hearing, oneness in hiding. Let me tell you something. I'm going to stop right here. I'm speaking to the women now. You are the greatest threat to the enemy. You are the greatest threat because it is from that position. It is from that function. That things are manifested. Manifested. You hear that? It is from that place. This is why marriages, relationships are fought against. It's not, a, it's not about your failures. It's not about you messed up. It's not about the wife or the husband separately. It's about that I can't defeat them. If they work together, even when things are out of order, if y'all work together, you can fix it. Woo! Okay? So, I'm going to deal with the threat tomorrow. I'm going to go to chapter 3, and I'm going to show you the threat. Women, we need you. Men, we need you to make the completion. Their name should speak because their name is Adam. And he said unto them, until we work together as one church, one faith, one Lord, one baptism, I pray that you make the one as we are one. 
Our number one problem is not homosexuality in the church. Our number one problem is not preachers of being pimps and taking the money. Our number one problem is that we don't understand oneness. If we understood oneness, we can fix every problem. It doesn't matter how many problems we have. I see you, you're naked, but I will work together. We will work together to have the covering. We will use our spiritual utensils, our spiritual equipment, to walk back into the place that God called us. If we work together, we win. If we work together, we win. It don't matter about the problems. It matter about the oneness. Whoosh. Oh, God. Oneness. 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 Lord, make me one with you. Make me one with the purpose. Who am I supposed to be connected to? Let me be one with them. One mind. Why was the church so powerful in the book of Acts? Because they had all things in common. They was on one accord. Why did the Holy Ghost fall on the day of Pentecost? Because they was all on one accord. Every time you see oneness, you see blessings. Nobody left because there was oneness. How did they get to the tower? How did they go to the tower in, in the 11th chapter of Genesis? How did they do it? Because they were oneness. God had to come down and confuse the language because there's nothing they can't do because the power of oneness, the unity, will achieve anything when these two come together. If two or three be gathered in my name, touching and agreeing, anything they ask, it shall be done unto them. We'll move to that later about the blame game. We'll move to that. And then begin to separate them. We'll move to that. Watch this. And, and, and you brought a point. Moretta said, Adam started the, the blame game. When Jesus came on the scene, he brought us back together as well. You're right. And the only reason why is because, watch this. Most of the time, we use, when we use our oneness, we use our oneness with one another, but we don't know how to be one with God. See? And so when he got to God, he began to say, the woman you gave me. Okay, and so I'll talk about that, but I want to deal with the oneness because the whole purpose is your name cannot speak. Even if you blame, see, this is the reason why we're not a strong country anymore because we blame the white man, the black man. You can't blame who God has assigned to your life to work together with. I need you. I am my brother's keeper. And I'm going to show you how that mentality came to came. Cain and Cain ended up killing Abel. Wherever there's not oneness, they will become murder. Wherever there's not oneness, then jealousy and envy take over. Wherever there's not oneness, a fit is designed to break the oneness. See? But the, but, but the assignment was not given to you. You can't pastor hating people. You can't, you can't be the woman you called to be and you hate all men. You can't be the man you called to be and you don't trust a woman. You got to have your eyes open to who God gave you and the purpose of your unity because your name will not speak in the earth as God designed it when you are fighting the thing that you are connected to. Every joint supply. The eye can't say to the ear, I don't need you. The ear can't say, the problem is not leaving church. The problem is becoming the church and becoming one. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. We love to go to the fivefold ministry of Ephesians 4 and 11. But before Paul talks about the fivefold ministry, he talks about endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit. Do all you can to keep the unity of the spirit. One Lord, one faith. One baptism. The reason why we got so many denominations, because we are divided nations. Denominations, divided nations. When we come as one, one Lord, one faith, not Baptist, not Catholic, not Pentecostal, not Church of God in Christ, one faith. We will never see the full potential of the name church, of the power of the body of Christ. The name cannot speak. God's authority is not in the earth as it should be because there's too much division. Their eyes was open. Stay together. 
Even when you don't agree, keep your eyes open. Even when you don't agree, don't deny that we're both naked. Even when you don't understand, I need you to help me sow these fig leaves. I need what you have been given to help me cover what I'm dealing with. Whew. Right? Okay. Father, we thank you for your anointing. Thank you for clarity. Oh, God, you gave us so much today. Allow us to digest it, bring it up, meditate so that we can mature. I'm praying that you expand our mind as you give us more. That we don't, we don't get rid of it because we don't have room for it. Help us to make room for what you have given us. Open up our minds so we can receive this revelation. The power of oneness. For you prayed, make them one as we are one. And that, Lord, we thank you that regardless of how many falls we have, the fall will reveal the power of the assignment. Thank you, Lord, that the fall reveals the power of the assignment. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you. Please go back and watch my video yesterday uh, in my father's house, me and Prophet James Summers. Powerful teaching on the watchman. You need to hear that. It's going to bless you and change your life. And thank you. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Same time, same place. Walk in God's favor. And remember, the fall is nothing but an opportunity to use the power of your assignment from this spiritual place. You've been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly place. Are you using them in your fall? Learn to use what God gave you before you fail so that when you fall, you can rise again. You can rise again if you use the power that God gave you before you fail. All right? God bless you.